Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and I want to apologize for the lack of video last week. I just simply took the week off for Easter, <laughs> but I'm back now. And today we're going to be taking another look at this um, laptop that I got a few months ago from Goodwill. This is the Dell Latitude C610. This is my main Windows 98 era laptop. I do pretty much all my uh, portable Windows um, 90s Windows gaming on here. Um, and it's working great. I will admit I haven't used it as much as I had hoped, but I'm definitely holding on to it. I know I will use it someday. Specs of this, it's got a, uh, I believe, a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3, a 60, no, an 80 gig hard drive, which we added, 256 megs of RAM, which we added, and a DVD-ROM slash CDRW drive down here, which I added off camera a while back. And, again, this is what I do most of my uh, 90s era gaming on when it comes to a laptop because it's the most convenient, it's in the best of shape, and it has a working battery. Now, one problem with this computer, um, unlike the Latitude C600, which I used to have and I've shown on this channel, is that the sound chip on here is not really ideal for DOS gaming. You can get um, like digital sound out of it, but for um, for uh, FM synthesis and ad lib stuff, um, you're not going to get any music at all. So I'm going to show in this video how you can run um, DOS games on a computer like this. So let's go ahead and power it up, and this will be running from the battery. Apparently, I didn't hit the the button the right way. There we go. Hope everyone had a good Easter week, by the way. I, I sure did. Go ahead and let this power up. See, so yeah, I've got all my software installed on here now. And I still recommend um, the Dell Latitude C600 or even the C610 like this if you want a really good um, vintage gaming laptop because it runs just about everything you throw at it, almost, that is. And um, for the most part, you can still get new batteries for these, uh, all these years later. Maybe not, there might not be the most interesting looking laptops from the era, but if you want something to play old games on, they get the job done very, very well. Alright, here we go. I'm not connected to the network, so we'll skip that. Again, this is not NT4. <laughs> I just like that startup sound. So I put it on some of my other computers, like this one. Okay, we're going to dive straight into the DOS gaming portion of this video, which is pretty much the whole video, if you ask me. And I got shortcuts to various DOS games. Now, I did discover that if the game is just um, digital audio only, and it requires no ad-lib support, um, this computer will run it just fine as is. Um, I'll show you an example, that being Epic Pinball. And of course you have to run all this through Windows to get any kind of sound at all. So as you can see we got sound effects and music, but again this is because there is no uh, ad-lib necessary for this. And as you can see the game plays perfectly fine. Although my ability of playing this game perfectly fine is quite questionable. I like the music on this table, but the table itself is not the best one on this game, if you ask me. Anyway, you get the point there. Let's exit back out of there so as you can see a game like that works just fine 
except it sometimes crashes your system. <laughs> Uh, the joys of vintage windows. It can be a, it can be fun to play with, but at times it will um, crash and burn on you without warning. So, I guess we got a reboot here, and um, we'll be back in a moment. Okay, now for an example of a game that just does not work right on a system like this that doesn't have good um, DOS AdLib support. Let's fire up Jewel the Jungle Hill here. see is just completely silent although you do get sound effects now for a lot of people you know no music it's no big deal but for me I just like having the full gaming experience and this is where we do a little bit of cheating now I'm going to go back to our game shortcut folder here and find Jill the Jungle. And there's a shortcut for it. It has the DOS icon there and everything. And we'll go ahead and load it up. And we've got music now. Now, how am I able to accomplish this? Well, the answer may have been given away to you um, a few moments ago. We are running a little program that you may be familiar with, known as DOSBox. And that's right, you can actually install the most latest edition of DOSBox on Windows 98. And it works perfectly well. And because DOSBox is an emulator, it, it emulates a Sound Blaster 16, which gives you perfect uh, MIDI support. And it's not only do, do you have MIDI support, but the MIDI support sounds as it should. So for games where you don't have, um, where you can't, where it requires MIDI, but your computer is like this and it doesn't support it, well, you can play it just fine. And yes, I do realize that is kind of silly having to run DOSBox on Windows 98 which is based off of DOS itself but for a computer with a sound card that just does not support DOS very well if at all DOSBox is where um, you go to get your good DOS support. <laughs> I know it's silly but anyway let's um, try a few more games here um, we're just going to focus on the DOS stuff right now We've got um, King's Quest 1 running through DOS box. And of course, you hit Alt Enter if you want it to go into uh, full screen. And the reason I have this running in DOS box um, is not because of sound issues, it's because this game um, is just too old to run properly on a Pentium 3 and you can see I just died right there. <laughs> so if we were to run this um, without DOSBox it would run way too fast. Okay, I forget how we get out of here. Uh, okay. F1 uh, turns. Okay. Uh. Okay, there we go. Of course, um, you have to manually turn it off, and um, as you can see, I have shortcuts here that go straight to these um, games via DOSBox. Um, that's because DOSBox has a hidden feature where you can create shortcuts to um, .com files and executables that will um, point it directly into DOSBox. And that's a little hard to explain here, but I can uh, 
possibly show you um, through the shortcut here for Jill the Jungle. I will include the instructions uh, to do that in the video description, if I remember that is. And of course, uh, we got Sky Road's Christmas special. You gotta have this. And you can see it runs perfectly well. It's a shame I have to emulate it, but as you can see, when you put it into full screen mode, it just seems absolutely seamless. Shame you have to manually exit, but really no big deal. Um, we can try one more. How about Flying Tigers? First, let's turn the sound down a little bit. It's a little loud. Now, Flying Tigers is another game that where the audio and music is just completely digital, so DOSBox is not needed. We can just run this completely natively. And this is a really good game, by the way. If I can remember the controls. Oh, there you go. Great little top-down um, shooter. I believe this was made somewhere in Germany in the 90s. And again, we're not using DOSBox for this. It's complete, completely native to the system. I imagine if you were to drop down into um, plain DOS mode, you wouldn't get any sound at all because of um, drivers. But there you go, you get the point. So there you have it. That's um, DOS games on a computer that has a sound card that doesn't support DOS. Um, it runs um, just fine when you use DOSBox. And there are even a few games where you don't even need um, DOSBox to get everything. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll um, put a link in the description on how to make shortcuts to DOS games through DOSBox. So, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.